Greetings, I am Herbert Erpadurp, and today I'm going to assemble this plastic 15mm scale Soviet heavy assault gun company for Flames of War. I was really happy to see these in plastic, and so I got my hands on them as soon as I could. The back of the box has a brief blurb about the ISU-152 and 122, an exploded diagram for instructions which is helpful as there are none included in the box nor does the Flames of War website have any instructions at the time of recording. There are also a couple of pictures demonstrating the model and the fact that you can build the ISU-152 or 122 with this box. Let's have a quick look at the contents of the box. Each vehicle has two sprues. The first has the tracks, which I think look really good. There's also the lower hull, a couple of machine guns, some boxes, and the external fuel tanks. The other sprue has the two guns, upper hull, and various other details. These parts really look quite nice and are well detailed. There are almost no mold lines and everything is neat and error free. There is of course a crew sprue, which is rather nice, though as usual, I probably won't use them. And a set of decals. This is the same set of decals that comes in the Resin Heavy Assault Gun Company which had an IS-2 command tank included. I begin assembly by gluing the tracks to the lower hull. The keying on these parts makes this incredibly easy. You simply can't put these tracks on wrong without significant effort. I have to say I really enjoy the detail these tracks have. They're about a billion times better than those found on the older metal tracks that you find on Battlefront's metal and resin offerings. Next, I glue the upper hull onto the lower hull. It fits fairly well, though you might need to press down towards the ends to avoid gaps. There was a little bit of a gap left after the glue had set, but that will be hidden by spare track links later. Now to begin adding the details, starting with gluing the rear of the casemate on. This is very simple. The ends are angled so that you can't put the part on upside down. I then attach this hatch. There was one minor issue with this. The instructions on the box appear to suggest that the mounting for the machine gun should be facing towards the front, rather than towards the middle of the vehicle like I have placed it. This would result in the two hatches being oriented differently, and they should be the same. Just something to watch out for. I then glued the machine gun into position. I then moved to the front of the hull and add this vision port and headlamp. I had to use tweezers to position this properly because my fingers were just too huge. Then I add the spare track links. I'm careful here to get these on nice and straight. You can see that they hide the gap in the front of the hull quite nicely. Next, I move to the back of the hull and attach the external fuel tanks. There isn't really anything to guide the position of these, so I just try to get them on neatly and in line with each other. There are a couple of crates that could be glued onto the engine deck here, but I've chosen to leave them off. Now to fill this giant blank space on the front of the hull with gun. If you know you only want one kind of gun, you can simply glue that into place. However, I like the ability to swap out the guns, so I'm going to magnetize them just like my resin ones. This is a bit easier with this plastic version. In the back of the gun mantlet is a round protrusion that I cut down with my knife. I then glue a magnet in. Definitely test that your magnets don't protrude beyond the edge of the part before gluing. The magnets I've used here are 2 by 2 millimeters. I then clean up the very minor mold lines on the guns. They're barely noticeable, but the mold lines are there. I then carefully drill out the end of the barrel, just because a flat, solid gun barrel doesn't look that convincing. I then drill out the other end of the barrel, the end that goes into the mantlet. For this I am using a larger bit to accommodate the 1x1mm magnets that I've used here. I had to be very careful to ensure that I centered the hole to leave enough plastic to surround the magnet. The process is the same for both guns. They can then simply be placed into the mantlet, and then it's ready to be glued onto the hull. This was quite easy, and it's a nice way to be able to field either ISU-122s or 152s and knowing which is which at a glance. One final thing to add is this flappy thing which goes on top of the mantlet. Simply glue it into place. I had to use a knife to get it into position properly without breaking the machine gun off, so perhaps that should have been added last. Oh well. That is the model completed. Let's have a quick look at how this model compares with the metal and resin version Battlefront offers. You can immediately see that the plastic version sits a little bit higher and its details are a lot sharper. I am certainly not an expert and I can't tell you which version is more realistic, but I do think they both look very good, though I think the new plastic version is better. They do of course both have their pros and cons. The resin version has that awesome log and box moulded in place. All four hulls in that box were different and they all had different stowage. This is unfortunately not the case on the plastic version which only has a couple of boxes. I imagine it would be impractical to have five different moulds for the hull tops, but a little bit more stowage would have been great. That said, I'll probably use a twig or something to give my plastic versions logs as well. From the side you can see that the plastic model has much more detail in the wheels and suspension gear. It looks really great, but it is lacking the moulded on pickaxe that the resin model has. 
The plastic version also has much better depth of detailing in the vents and grills on the engine deck. Build-wise, the plastic kit is a tiny bit more complicated to put together owing to more parts, but it was much easier to magnetise the guns than on the resin version owing to the removable mantlet. I had to do a lot more drilling with the resin model. That said, they're both really nice models and they both have a place in my army, which will now count 13 of these beasts, which is probably excessive. Even if I can never use all of these in a game of Flames of War, I'm glad I bought this kit. It's really nice, very quick and easy to put together. The exploded diagram instructions, despite that one minor flaw with the hatch orientation, are clear enough. It was disappointing that the Flames of War website lacked any instructions or articles about the model, though I do understand they must be busy and have not had time to update the site. Still a bit disappointing. Oh well, not the end of the world. Magnetising the guns was pretty easy and only added a little bit more time to the build process. There is one fairly major difference difference between this new plastic heavy assault gun company and the old resin version, and that is the absence of the IS-2 command tank. The old box came with four ISUs and one IS-2, and this box has five ISUs. Not that I have a problem with that. The IS-2s can be had separately, and I do have a box of the new plastic Flames of War versions which I will show you soon. Of course this is only really an issue if you're wanting to field these as your main force where you would need the IS-2 command tank. A box of 5 ISUs makes more sense for those just wanting to field a platoon of them in support of other units, and that's probably what most people want. In the end, if your 15mm scale Soviet force needs some heavy assault guns, I would gladly recommend these beasts. I doubt that I will get around to painting these anytime soon. There is just so much other stuff that I want to get done first, but I think these will look really nice when I get them done. I hope this video has been interesting or helpful for you. Don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more, including the plastic IS-2s. And as always, leave any comments or questions you might have in the comments section below or on Facebook or Twitter, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Farewell.